Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Valerie and today I want to show you how to make this shoulder bag. This bag is quite simple to sew, so even if you're a beginner, you'll be able to sew it. Additionally, to make it even easier, I've created a pattern. It's free, so follow the link in the video description and download it. So let's get started! To sew this bag, we will need fabric. It can be any fabric, but it's preferable for it to be dense. I have this ring of fabric. Also, we will need a lining fabric, interfacing, two types of zippers, one like this with big metal teeth, and the other for the pocket with small plastic teeth. We will also need eyelets and a cord lock. So I've cut out all the pieces of the bag. Now I'm going to take the main piece and align it with the protective flap piece. I've pre-ironed it in half. Then I'm going to take the zipper and align it with the main piece and a flap at the center marks. As you can see, the zipper tails extend beyond the fabric, but I'll trim them later. And I'm going to make a stitch. On the other side, I do the same thing, but this time I'm just going to sew the zipper to the main piece without a flap. After that, press everything with an iron and make top stitches. And this is how it all looks. Now take the handle pieces and align them at the center marks as well. As you can see, one piece is larger than the other, as it should be. And stitch them together on both sides with 1cm seams. At the beginning and end of the seams, leave 1cm seam allowances. Now turn the handle right side out and press it. Where we left seam allowances, make notches like this. Do this on all sides. Now place the main piece on the handle, align their ends and make a notch at the same distance. Then stitch these pieces together up to the notch on all sides. Leave a 1cm seam allowances at the bottom. I've stitched the pieces together on all sides. Here's how it looks. The pieces are not fully stitched together. There are openings at the top. We'll stitch them later. Now on one side of the handle, we want to insert eyelets. I've transferred the markings from the pattern where they will be inserted and I've also reinforced this area with a piece of interfacing. And now I'm going to insert the eyelets. Actually, they could have been inserted before sewing the handle to the main piece, but I forgot about them. The eyelets are only inserted into one part of the handle, not all the way through. Now we can close the side openings. Since we made notches, the fabric naturally turns out the way it should, so we just need to close this opening with a straight stitch. Now let's make ties. To avoid struggling with turning them inside out, I'm going to simply fold the fabric strip in quarters and stitch along the edge. So first, fold the strip in half and press it to mark the center. Then fold the edges towards the center and press them. Next, fold them once more and stitch along the edge. Then 
Now thread them through the handle and pull them through the eyelets. On the other side of the handle, secure them with a straight stitch. The excess can be trimmed. And we can insert the ties into the cord lock right away. Now we're going to sew on the bottom. But before that, it needs to be reinforced with interfacing. So I've cut out a piece of interfacing, the same size as the bottom, and now I'm going to fuse it to the bottom. At the bottom, we left 1cm seam allowances. So I'm going to sew the bottom to the seam allowances. I recommend sewing the bottom on not in a circle, but each side separately. This way, everything turns out neater. Then turn the back right side out and the main part of the back is ready. Now let's work on the lining. I finished all the lining pieces on the other locker. It's not necessary to do this, I just really get annoyed by the loose threads. You can also finish them with a zigzag stitch on a sewing machine. I transferred the mark from the pattern, indicating where the pocket entrance will be. This area needs to be reinforced with interfacing. So cut out two pieces of interfacing, each 25 by 5 cm. Fuse one piece to the pocket entrance area and the other to the pocket itself, both on the wrong sides. Now place the pocket on the right side of the main piece, aligning the two interfacing rectangles and pin it in place. I drew a pocket frame 20 by 1 cm and now I'm going to stitch along this frame. Next, carefully cut along the central line. We then go all the way to the end, leaving about 1 cm and cut a triangle. Now pull the pocket through the formed opening and iron it. So I've ironed everything well, now take the zipper. Place it under this opening and stitch it all the way around. You can pin it or baste it to prevent it from shifting while stitching. Then fold the pocket and close all the sides with a 1cm seam. And here's the pocket you get. On the other side of the lining we'll also have a pocket, but this one will be open. Fold the pocket piece in half and stitch all sides closed. Here at the center leave a small opening for turning it inside out. Now turn the pocket right side out and press it. Place the pocket on the lining and pin it in place. And top stitch around all sides. 
except for the top, of course. Now we want to assemble all the pieces. So just like we did with the main part of the bag, pin them all together and stitch leaving 1 cm seam allowances at the top and bottom. Then sew on the bottom. When sewing on the bottom, leave an opening for turning the back right side out. Just like we did in a bag, make notches where we left seam allowances. Then turn the fabric and make a stitch. Here's what you should get. Leave a 1 cm seam allowances in the center as well. Now turn the back inside out and stitch the line into the zipper. Then stitch together the side seams of the lining and the main fabric. Now turn the back right side out, tuck the lining inside, and the bag is almost ready. We just need to close the opening in the lining. This can be done in two ways. With a blind hand stitch or simply by top stitching. I choose the second option. And here's the final result. I really hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want me to do any specific DIYs, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!